when the math is like one out of 100 million, like what, what did they fuck up this time? Ladies and gentlemen, spicy meatball today, NBME, Nepal, USMLE scandal. We're talking about it today with the one and only soon to be Dr. Sean Anderson. How's it going guys? Check him out, Sean Anderson, YouTube channel linked below. So what, give me the big picture overview, what happened? So basically, NBME has invalidated over 800 step one, two, and three exam scores from Nepali medical graduates. And the reason they're doing so is they have very strong evidence to suggest that there was cheating involved. Now, when I first heard this, I was like, you're really concerned about a type one error, right? You don't want to, or essentially a false positive where you're accusing someone of cheating that didn't. But I assure you that they also understand the ramifications of getting that wrong. We'll get into the math later, but pretty strong evidence to suggest that these people were in fact cheating. Let's go over where we started, how we got here today, and the next steps, what it means for US graduates, international graduates, and so on. So basically, NBME got some anonymous tips that there may be some cheating behavior in several different countries, not just Nepal, but there were you know, reports from Nepal, India, Pakistan, Jordan. Most, most of those complaints or a high percentage of them were clustered around Nepal, which is why they focused there at exactly. least first. We'll get to their future investigations shortly. But basically they looked at these tips and then they went and looked at the actual exam performance of a bunch of the test takers from Nepal and found some pretty concerning findings uh, and suspicious you know, test taking activity. A few things they found. So one is that you can look at the average test score for USMLE step one, step two, step three. And the scores in Nepal are way higher than any other country. And maybe they just do better on their exams than we do. That's obviously not strong enough evidence. Right. They're just a concerning, interesting finding. Possibly the most damning evidence is agreement analysis, where you're essentially looking at the performance on a test and the USMLE is how many hundreds, like 180 questions? 280. 280 questions, because I know my shit. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's been a while for Kevin. <laughs> it's been a minute. So they look at the number of questions you get right, the number of questions you get wrong, and how closely that matches with other test takers. When you have that many questions and all these different possibilities, the chances of two people having very similar answers becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So using this agreement analysis, they found that, I mean, they had some really insanely high cutoff because what you don't want is to have false positives. You don't want to say, hey, this person cheated when in fact they didn't. That would be disastrous. Right. And of course the NBME, smart people, they know that. Yeah. So they're, they're having the threshold for certainty very high. Like in research, we talk about p-values of less than 0.05, 5%. These guys are doing like 0.000001 kind of thing. So their cutoff, I believe, is one out of 100 million are right. the chances. And that, that cutoff is very high uh, certainty, right? Essentially, the agreement analysis showed that a lot of these test takers were getting a lot of the same questions right and a lot of the same questions wrong and fit that kind of one in 100 million chance that they would all get these exact same questions right and wrong, you know, at the same time. Yeah. So. Pretty damning. And then interestingly, there was, was actually a case, a class action started by one of the Nepali graduates whose scores were invalidated. What happened there? So basically, like you said, one of the Nepal graduates whose scores were invalidated filed a suit and said, hey, like, this isn't fair. You're targeting Nepal specifically and you invalidated over 800 of our scores and we're gonna say that this is because of discrimination. You're unfairly targeting specifically Nepal. Title seven of the Civil Rights Act. Exactly. And so NBME came back w with a bunch of evidence saying, well, we didn't really target you. We just got so many tips about Nepal that it just made sense to look there first. And so that was the first rebuttal from NBME. And then you basically had a bunch of back and forth about, well, here's how I didn't cheat. And then NBME saying, well, here's why it's pretty likely that you cheated. My favorite example is um, the way the test is designed, it, you're, you're kind of averaging around 90 seconds per question, but you know, but hopefully you're doing closer to 60. Best case, so you have some time at the end to go over difficult answers, whatever. So let's say you're really on top of things, 60 seconds. But again, it's designed for like 90. 
this student or this uh, graduate was going through step one, step two, step three, really fast. Super fast. And some questions less than 30 seconds, some questions less than 20 seconds. Now to read the clinical vignette, go through the answer choices and choose that based on your knowledge. Knowledge. Even if you really know your stuff, just unlikely. And the response was, well, I was guessing. And I just, I'm a good guesser, you know? Multiple choice, USMLE, four or five questions for the most part. So if you randomly guess, you would assume statistically 20, 25%. Let's say you're really good at guessing and you have some contextual clues. So let's say 40, 50%, right? Let's be generous here. What does she get? Across step one, step two, and step three, on average, between those three exams, she scored between 85 and 100% of the questions correct that she guessed on. Guessed on. That's tough to argue with. So how did they cheat exactly? Right, so according to these tips, what happened was there's been this big group chat and a bunch of Nepal students are in it and they've together created this large document that they've titled Savior. And it's over a thousand pages long and has tons of recalled NBME exam questions from previous test takers. Yeah, so recall is really the, the crux of it. It's USMLE questions that were recently on the actual test that are likely being recycled on upcoming tests because each one has a shelf life, right? right. Before they're uh, recycled or discarded or used on your shelf exams um, or whatever else and these questions, these recall cue banks, if you will, they were so high quality. They included all the details of the question stem, the answer choices. So what people are now talking about is, can someone really just memorize this? Or is there actually someone who works at the testing center who's an insider on this, who's actually facilitating the transfer? You know, it's, it's pretty alarming. It's also really stupid in the grand scheme of things because it's so easy to get caught. All you guys are seeing the questions with all the right answers and you're essentially, the questions that are being recycled that you have access to before, you're gonna get all those right and all the new ones that you haven't seen, uh, you're probably gonna start getting wrong. And you can very clearly see that with the data. Yeah. So it's not, it's not too hard to, <laughs> I'm surprised it took this long actually. Yeah, and like, you know, this has been going on for a while. So, you know, you wonder how could they recall it perfectly? Well, if you have one person who reports like the question, right? And then another person who took the exam on the same day goes into the document and is like, oh, I did see a question that kind of talked about this. Here's some other details that I so remember So maybe the multiple question. people are. Yeah, so exactly. Mm -hmm. Multiple test takers are just contributing to it and adding more detail that they remember from certain questions or more answer options that they remember from that question that maybe they were kind of going back and forth with. And if you have hundreds of people doing this, for multiple, you know, test dates over multiple years, you end up creating a really big manifesto of practice questions or previous questions. So what's happened to those students, these 832 that uh, their scores were invalidated? Exactly, so basically NBME went on and invalidated all their scores on their transcripts. So if they go look, it'll say that they tested on this date, but there's no score available. And this is, a really big deal because in order to apply for residency in the United States, you have to have a score. You have to have a passing score to apply for residency. And, and especially for FMGs, it's even more competitive. You think it's yes. competitive as a US MD or DO, it is, it's a whole nother ball game for FMGs. Yeah, I think last year actually, 59 point something, almost 60% of foreign medical graduates actually matched into residency. So 40% of them did not. Yeah, and, and US grads are something like 96% match rate, something like that. Exactly. So it's already really hard. So they felt like they needed to cheat in order to have an upper hand. And as a result, this has happened. And so now we have a bunch of people who have their scores invalidated. And this probably but that's, that's for those who are applying now, but what about those who also already graduated might even be in a program right now? Right, so this has been going on for many years, like we said. There are probably residents and maybe even attendings currently here in the United States that cheated on these exams. And that's a really big deal because once those people start to get caught, there's gonna be a lot for these programs to think about and you know, we don't even know what action's gonna be taken. There's actually a really great video from an assistant program director his channel is called Sheriff of Sodium. And in his video, he actually goes over uh, the various permutations. He actually has a really thorough series on this yeah. link below. But now let's talk about what does this mean moving forward? So I think, first of all, those who suffer the most right now are other international medical students, especially from Nepal. But the NBME has issued a statement that 
they're, I mean, they started with Nepal, but they're also looking, they also have a lot of reports, I think in Jordan and in India, Pakistan. Yeah. The fun is just getting started, essentially. So those foreign medical graduates, especially from Nepal, there might be a bit of a stigma now and some questioning as to whether or not they are one of those cheaters or whether they got their score legitimately. Right, like if, you know, if you're in the shoes of a program director and you're kind of hearing about this scandal going on and you're having to make decisions about who you're going to match into your program, a lot of them are not gonna to want to get their hands dirty. They're gonna to wanna to say, you know what? I've Take heard the about safer, this. the safer option. Yeah, and end up not ranking or matching any international students, for example. Yeah, so I think other international graduates are probably suffering the most, mm -hmm. but I mean, the other thing that really comes to mind top of list is patience. So you have people who don't know the information because they are passing these tests and scoring much higher than they should because they're cheating. Yep. And now, I mean, a big part of being a, an adequate physician is having the, the necessary knowledge, right? The, the clinical knowledge and skill. And those people running around the hospital treating patients, that's a big issue. Right, and if they get their scores invalidated, if, if they're caught for cheating, you know, they'll get kicked out of their programs potentially. Um, lose work visas, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you you essentially need to pass step one, step two, and step three to get licensed, right? To take care of patients. And the other issue with that is that anyone who's here on a J1 or HB1 visa, they're required to be part of an educational program to maintain those visas and continue living here in the United States. So those folks are at risk of losing that visa and then, you know, being sent back to their home country, essentially. Yeah, so I, I mean, when I first heard about the story, I don't know what the viewers think, but I remember thinking like, I have heard stories and even witnessed things of just pretty bad behavior and, and incompetence with testing centers, with mm -hmm. NBME. And um, my initial thought was like, uh, like what, what did they fuck up this time? but because they have such high degrees of certainty based on the math, I don't think, based on what we're seeing right now, it doesn't look like there are any false positives. They have a very high degree of certainty that these people are cheating. And that opens up a whole nother question, which is like, why does this seem so prevalent? I remember like, I have been creating content on Medical Insiders since October of 2016. Mm -hmm. And I remember I started getting comments about because I worked hard in college or med school because I worked my tail off. And I got comments about how I must've been on some stimulants or Adderall or never like cheating on tests. But I think that using stimulants, using any type of neurotropic, especially if it's a prescription drug and it's not prescribed to you. Uh, if it is prescribed to you, obviously a completely different conversation. But it, a lot of people actually questioned, they're like, dude, there's no way you did that stuff without using Addy, without, without popping some stimulant. Right. But I think this kind of mindset that you need to do something that extreme, which is obviously like far less extreme than something like this. Mm. But the fact that you need to cheat in any way or cross the line in any way in order to get certain results, I think that's harmful. I think that is, that's a failure of character. That's a failure of mindset. Because if you think that the people who achieved what they achieved only did that through nefarious means, Therefore, if I am gonna achieve those results, I have to do th so through nefarious means. Are you gonna try as hard? Are you gonna expect certain results from yourself? Obviously not. Versus if you assume that you can do those things without cheating, without nefarious means, then obviously you're gonna work way harder. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that, yeah, I did all that stuff, all of college, all of med school, without any prescription stimulants, without anything illicit. And mostly not even coffee because it, you know, I have a, I have a gut condition and it just wreaks havoc. So I was just, just grinding. And I would say that the majority, you know, 99.9% .9 of students agree. They Most people are not cheating on these exams, but you're well, always I gonna think have- Not cheating, but I think a lot of people, I think you, you see the, the conversation about stimulants right. much more prevalent in colleges today. Way more, like first of all, when I was in college, True. it wasn't yeah. a common thing. Like none of my friends did that stuff. No. Yeah. And, and now you hear it about it all the time. And this, you know, it's a different conversation than stimulants, but I think the mindset is the same thing, which is that like th there is, you are forever gonna know the truth. You can fool other people, you can never fool yourself. And then you you carry that burden around with you for the rest of your life saying like, you know what? Yeah, I'm an MD and- Yeah, I cheated on, uh, I had to cheat on the US though because like I couldn't do it on my own, you know? Those are just, I don't know. I think there's a certain level of long-term mindset that's useful to adopt that sometimes people, when they have the short-term mentality, hey, I just need to get to that next step, mm -hmm. they lose the force for the trees. And it's it's like, 
it's ultimately harmful to themselves, to patients, to other students, because now the other students, if they want to be competitive now and those who are cheating are getting away with it, then like, where do, yeah. where do they stand now? And if you look at a lot of the screenshots coming out of the group chat that this whole thing kind of like was derived from, a lot of them are like, you know, thanking each other for contributing to the document. You know, all of you guys have paved the way for all of us to move on to the next step is, you know, the rough wording that I've seen from some of the screenshots almost kind of like very proud that like, you know, it's working, we're doing it, like we're getting to the next step, you know, I'll see you guys on the other side kind of language. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they feel good if they're doing well, but like there are real consequences for cheating on, you know, medical licensure exams. It's not, you know, just you in question, like you have to take care of patients. You're gonna be taking care of people's lives. Like there are actually consequences to not knowing tested material. Everything we study is because it could save someone's life one day, right? And I don't know, like you can't teach morals, you know, you can't teach ethics to some degree. Like, you know, you have to kind of have that internal compass that what you're doing is what you truly believe to be the right thing. But there are really big consequences in the medical field for cheating. And, and I think, you know, some people are saying that what the NBME is doing is too harsh. And in fact, I think it might actually be borderline too too generous because they're saying hey you can just retake the exam and like no problem yeah, and they were they were being very generous like the fact that they offered them like hey you can reset for step one two and three they were offered that you know if you truly believe that you didn't cheat and that this is a false allegation you can reset which i understand like the optics of that and why that might be necessary but when the math is like one out of 100 million you know the program directors are going to see that score not available for those previous attempts that have been invalidated. So if they hunt through their their ERAS portal and whatnot yeah. and get to that point, they can see that and they may put, put two and two together, but I almost feel that there should be a more explicit statement that, hey, accused of this, this is why the score is invalidated to really make sure that people don't get away with this because I think people mm -hmm. are getting away with this. They have such a high threshold mathematically uh, before they invalidate someone's score that maybe if it's one out of 10 million chances or one out of 5 million chances, those people are getting away with it. Right? Yeah, there's probably people that did cheat. A lot of false negatives, that. but that's that's by design because when you're with any kind of test, you need to choose your sensitivity specificity and positive predictive value. Like we can get into the whole statistics, but essentially you don't want to have any false positives. Mm -hmm. That would be disastrous. So they have to have the threshold really high. And I mean, the positive predictive value in Nepal is also gonna be a lot higher based on the clustering and, and where a lot of this was, yeah. was taking place. But it's it's a it's a huge mess all around. And I just think that the the idea, people have been cheating in the past, but maybe it's just my impression, but it feels like the conversations about trying to work around the system is more prevalent now than it was before. The next question is, how can the NBME reduce the possibility of cheating moving forward? So I feel like Prometric testing centers, they're not perfect, but already pretty high security, right? Based on the method they used here, it seems like changing the questions more frequently, having a shorter life of question on the actual test is gonna help. Using these mathematical analyses to catch outliers sooner is gonna help. Right, like seeing like, oh, these questions are getting answered more correctly as time goes on might indicate that people are reporting these questions and documenting these questions and sharing them, stuff like that. And there are of course costs associated with creating new questions on a higher frequency, but now we have tools like AI, right? And and that can actually help uh, generate new questions or even modify existing questions such that they can't be recognized as easily, mm -hmm. but you still are testing the same concept, the same underlying concept with some details changed. I'm sure there are a few other ideas. Why don't you guys share some, some of your own down below? So in summary, let's recap. Who got hurt the most? What are the next steps? Right, so by far the people who actually got hurt the most from this are just all international medical graduates, especially those from the countries that are under investigation because now they have this- Primarily like, Nepal right now. Right, and because they have the stigma on them. They are under this big investigation. You know, everyone's hearing about it. Programs are hearing about it. And we're currently in the middle or at the very end of a residency match era. So there's gonna potentially be some con consequences and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, so right now, this is the end of the season, end of the cycle. So people are submitting their rank lists end of February and March 15th is match day yeah. this year. Now looking forward, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with match this year. So are you gonna see a decrease in the number of uh, FMGs from Nepal that match into the US this year? 
possibly. There are some arguments that we have more residency spots than we have medical graduates in the United States. And so there are a lot of programs that actually do rely on international you know, applicants and graduates to fill those spots. Uh, you see that a lot in things like family medicine, internal medicine. And more like community programs. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, there's a chance this doesn't affect you know, people a whole lot, but it's kind of too early to tell. This stuff is actually still going on. Like there are still, you know, there's still new information coming out. There's updates from NBME. I feel like this is potentially just the tip of the iceberg. I know we already have over 800 invalidated scores, but they're just starting their search. They're gonna be applying more metrics, more analyses. They're gonna be looking at other countries you know, the US included, right? Like it's not like they're targeting one country. They're gonna be on high alert right now, right now I think. And we're gonna just see some developments over the next few months about this. Absolutely. We're gonna be making some more updated videos both on this channel and on Medical Insiders about the whole ordeal. So subscribe to both. Go subscribe to Sean's channel as well, link below. And let us know your thoughts. What do you think of this whole ordeal? How can they reduce cheating in the future? Are those who are suspected of cheating Currently, are they being treated fairly? Is it is it too harsh? Is it not harsh enough? Let us know your thoughts down below. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you all in the next one.